Hello everybody, my name is Provis and welcome back to more Democracy 4 in the United States with the Futurist Party. Um, looking like we are in fact the way of the future. We are going into an election year next time around. So that's going to be fun. Pollution is right back. I knew that was going to happen. Hostages rescued. Hostages taken by a terrorist group have been found and rescued by our army. Patriots are thrilled. Uh, I think that's partly something that can happen if you have pretty darn good intelligence services as well as military spending and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty nice. Uh, water shortages are about to occur. Oh gosh, okay. Well, that's that's going to be a problem. Um, really? It's going up by this much? I'm really surprised by that. I would have thought that the plant-based diets were improving things, and the environment isn't the worst. Uh, yeah, it is. Never mind. <laughs> All right, a water shortage is really bad. Uh, we have a donor who's making demands. He wants a public religious broadcast. Nope, not doing that. Don't need it. Hey, we still have a budget surplus despite the fact that we are pa passing some rather massive sweeping healthcare changes. So let's see. Dr. Strike has dropped massively. Private healthcare is skyrocketing up, and that is taking away all the power that the doctors have for their um, uh, collective bargaining. So that's great for me. Uh, hospital overcrowding is dropping pretty huge as well. That means we're about to get a huge boost in parents' happiness. Parents actually are happier, so I don't think these ministers are going to be against me for too much longer. We will see. Other things we could do. Um, well, honestly, we kind of may need to pass the Climate Change Adaption Fund pretty soon. Um, because knowing that a water shortage is on the way, that's going to end up being one way to try and deal with it. And water shortages are bad in that they continually start to uh, build up food costs and other things and get you into a death spiral. Honestly, I'm not thrilled that this is a part of the base game. We can do the um, vertical farms preemptively. This is cheap and would help to address it a little bit. But we've already crossed the start trigger, so I'm a little concerned that that's not going to be great anyway. Um, it's expensive. That's one downside. Farmers will be thrilled. Traffic congestion going down is good. Uh, if we place you, like, over here, it'll make it cheaper for me to change this again in the future if I want to. Food pricing going down is dangerous for obesity, but we've already got so many more health measures. Maybe this is fine. Uh, capitalists, and it doesn't show the water shortage, but I guarantee you that it is making an impact based on what we were seeing earlier. Um, I don't necessarily want to max it out. I think it's going to be too much. So we're going to go for this for now. Little expensive, but if it does let us deal with anything, we'll be fine. A border wall—that's a that's a thing now. Patriots love it. No one else does, though. <laughs> okay. Um. What's this? The carpooling campaign—we already did that. I'm just looking if there's anything else I would want to change. Bike subsidies—we've already got. Uh, recycling—we could change this and upgrade it a little bit. A little more recycling would make the environment slightly, and I mean slightly better. I'll go ahead and do this using my last political capital, but it's not a big deal as far as I'm concerned. We have an income of a trillion dollars per quarter, by the way. That's pretty good. All things concerned, I think that's pretty darn good. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, she wants to talk to me again because she's upset, and she wants diverted profits tax. I apologize. What now? Poverty is going up slightly. Health's gone down because of pollution. I'm aware of that. And employment. We could do campaign speeches. Now, speeches are usually a pretty good way of building up um, a little bit more. Can, can you go away? Hey. Hey. I have a... Escape. For some reason, quit wouldn't work on that. You have to hit escape. Okay. So, these are usually how you try to build up some more uh, relations with various different groups in order to win elections. Now, I'm not worried about winning elections. However, it would be kind of nice to be trying to make, let's say, um... Uh, not trade unionists. Uh, who are people we care about? Capitalists and make the socialists really unhappy? You know, I could do that. Although, to be honest, socialists aren't super angry at me anyway. Um, liberals, we could do some speeches and try to shore up with different groups, and what it could do is actually build enough popularity to make our ministers happy as well. Uh, fundraising, I'm not too worried about. We have pretty bad fundraisers, but honestly, we're still doing great compared to everyone else, and that's mostly because of my raw popularity. Perceptions, we could also pass different, um, initiatives to make me look more trustworthy or strong or compassionate, which is good, but in this case, again, when we have this much of a vote, I'm not worried about it. And the parties are looking unbelievably good. We have huge fanatical support. Oh, you want to know how to become popular in the USA? It turns out this is it. Okay, so the Doctor Strike is officially going to end as of next round. Thank God. Also, the hospital overcrowding, I think, might have crossed the stop trigger, albeit barely if so, but I think it has. Um, so this is good. Okay, and respiratory disease kind of did a bounce back, but... 
oh well, what can I do about that? So I think our big challenge now is going to ultimately end up being the climate. And we're going to have to pass a tax for that, probably. Um, preferably something that will actually get me a pretty good amount of money. I don't like automation tax. Diverted profits tax. This makes socialists happy. I'm curious, by the way, why did you care about this? You are sympathized with self-employed and motorists. But the self-employed love me, so that's not the issue. Why are you such a jerk? I really don't know why you're so disloyal, to be honest. Um, I've done a lot for them. I really have. Car emission limits, clean fuel subsidies. Now, here's the thing we could do. This makes the environment better. It's not outrageously expensive. And it's good for motorists and give them some more income because they have, you know, cheaper cars to work with. So this is pretty good for me. I'm willing to spend a fair chunk of money because this is a good way of improving the environment. Have less nasty, um, gross fuel getting into the atmosphere. We passed the female generation ban? We did do that. Hmm, huh, okay. Um, we lost a cabinet member. Oh! Well, that's a problem. Did she die? Uh, welfare. Nope. No one of you. Welfare, welfare. Trade unions. Nope. Nope. And nope. Okay, these are all terrible. Well, I have no good replacements, unfortunately. Um, we can pick up somebody who's not good at any of these. Motorist and liberal, for example. I mean, okay, no, wait, this, is, this works. She is for welfare. I will hire you then. You'll work. You'll work for me. Okay. So, yeah, um, what's her name? Did I fire her? No, the other lady quit. Okay. Well, you know, I did my darndest, and parents were happier, and if you had waited one more turn, this was going to be fine. So, oh well. You know, I don't even care anymore. I don't even care anymore. What's our tobacco usage looking like, by the way? It would be good to reduce that for the sake of overall health. It's looking pretty good. So, here's one reason to get rid of things like tobacco usage. Um, it increases the costs of your health care. And, and this is another situation where the more um, wellness programs you have and the more people are either not obese or not using too much alcohol or tobacco, it doesn't cost as much in vouchers because overall people are healthier and you don't need to spend as much. So it's great. Um, we probably should reduce this. I mean, I can go ahead and spend a couple points to just reduce this a little bit. Sure. Let's spend some money and some points to reduce the tobacco usage. It's overall just good for me. And yeah, demand from donor. New carb subsidies. Well, I don't have enough political capital, so I can't pass it. Um, I wish I had seen that earlier. This isn't bad, it's just expensive. So I'm going to have to refuse, and we lose another donor. Whatever. I'll survive on small don donor donations. Words. They mean things. Small donations by the people. I've got fanatical support, okay? Hospital overcrowding and doctor strike is gone. Thank you so very, 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 very much. Merger. A large internet company has announced plans to buy out one of its main competitors. The merger needs government approval before it goes ahead. It will create one of the biggest companies in the country. Not necessarily a big deal, as long as it doesn't create a monopoly, which is considered to be an inefficiency. Not always, by the way. Sometimes monopolies could theoretically be okay, but in practice, almost always end up becoming a problem and becoming a distortion for a competitive market. So there's a reason even most free market capitalists oppose uh, monopolies, and I, I am one of those folks. So we can allow the merger... Um, in an increasingly uh, global market, our companies need to grow. Eh, I mean, w blocking the merger, which is going to be good for me here. So this will make the small uh, self-employed and the trade unions happy. This might make capitalists happy, and I'm going to go for that. Self-employed don't like it. Capitalists love it. GDP goes up. Trade unions goes down. Unemployment goes up. Yeah, not great for the self-employed, but otherwise not bad. This kind of works for me. New major party donor. Oh, good. We got another guy with money bags. Literal money bags. It's a thing. What is this? Welfare system, welfare fraud departments. Okay. A special report tonight shines a light on the shocking level of fraud in our welfare system. In just one example, we follow Isaac, not his real name, as he claims a whole range of benefits from the government despite having a good job paying him in cash. He refuses to declare on any government form. It's so easy to do this, I'd be a fool not to play the system. Well, if we did this, it would upset the poor. It will make the middle income people happy because they feel like they're getting screwed less. Um, it would make us less compassionate, though. It's not something I feel like I'm really worried about. I'm gonna go ahead and ignore it, but it is a thing we could potentially do. Uh, okay, so let's see. Tech grants. Productivity would go up if I did this. Tech grants are actually pretty good. It does reduce religious membership, which I always thought was hilarious. The more technologically advanced we are, the less religious we are. Doesn't always go hand-in-hand in, hand in my experience, but sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. Uh, reducing religious membership is actually okay with me, because they're not a group that's gonna love me for much. Um, the thing is, if I do the minimum amount of money, we get a tech boost without anything else. 
This is expensive. It's my only real downside. Like, I'm not sure I can afford to do a huge amount of this. Capitalists love it, though. Productivity going up is big. Too much technology is dangerous. I'm willing to do a small amount of tech grants to rake in some of those extra bonuses. By the way, the global economy is in a recession. That said, our relative GDP is still climbing regardless. So we're doing fine on the capitalist side. Look at that surplus, though. Yo, me likey. Okay, what else we got? Youth politics, meh. Diverted profits, what does this even mean, actually? Tax levied on estimates, oh, we talked about this before. Yeah, it's so that it's, to, it's yeah, okay. Multinational tax evasion. I haven't gotten the warning that that's a thing we need to worry about yet. Um, energy efficiency is usually quite nice. City farms, meh. Carbon capture. Now, here's a fun thought. So, if we were to do carbon capture, um, this is, by the way, the technology that I'm really looking forward to as far as dealing with climate change. Um, more than most other things. Most proposals I find to be very impractical. But carbon capture, if we can actually get that technology, would be huge. So if we can reduce the CO2 emissions, the average temperature goes down, which is good for dealing with my potential water shortage issues. So that's good. Um, average temperature is the main reason we are having serious issues, though, when it comes to the environment. Um, yeah, I mean... Yeah, carbon capture is a good use of money in that, yeah, it can reduce our CO2 emissions a lot. It's very expensive. Very. But if this can reduce our CO2 by a lot, I think it's okay. I'm going to keep you here. $30 billion per quarter that I am dedicating to this technology. Yikes, dude. It's going to be a little on the expensive side. A little on the expensive side, but we'll give it a go. Sticking up for the environment. An environmental protester has breached airport security. Middle income, people don't like it. Environmentalist membership. Really, though? Okay. Manifesto promises are now available. We can use this to promise things and make people happy. But to be honest, I'm not worried about it. We have 100% of the vote, and we still have a surplus. Could do a campaign speech, I suppose. Um, that is a major factor usually I would take advantage of. Like, usually I would do things like this. And sometimes they're really good. We can make the retired happy at the expense of the youth. Yeah, we can make the environmentalists happy, commuters happy, the poor at the expense of the wealthy. I like how it's a wealthy chic, by the way. That's awesome. Uh, Self-employed. We can upset trade unionists. I mean, these are all things we can do. But eh, I don't really, I don't really see the point. Taxes. Frequent flyer tax, not good. Public tax returns reduces tax evasion. It's okay. It's expensive in terms of political capital, though. Plastic bags tax? No. Microgeneration grants. It does improve the environment a lot. Um, this isn't bad. I think this is my next real big problem, to be honest. This is, this is what's going to kill me. Food prices will start to go up a lot. We can try to also increase um, our plant-based diets and try to create a more vegetarian society. Just improving the environment alone, though, would also solve the water crisis. GDP going up is the main reason it keeps going down. We could modify our pollution controls, and this is a cheap way of doing things. It upsets capitalists a lot. But it improves the environment a lot as well. And yeah, I know it reduces GDP. But if we want to do a small increment rather than committing to a big one right now, we could do this. Um, a slight reduction in GDP is good for the environment as well. And we kind of have to do both. Normally, I'm not much of one to sacrifice GDP. Typically, I would like bump that up as much as we can. But in this case, I don't think it's great. Foreign relations. How are we looking on that front? Because we should have pretty darn good relations given our foreign aid. It's not looking bad. It's not looking bad. Um, okay. University grants. We haven't done these. This would be good. It's pricey. But it does reduce the generational wealth gap. Skill shortage, teacher strike, and all that stuff. Uh, it does apparently increase the teacher's shortage. Which is interesting. You know, we could do school vouchers as well. That's another way that we could deal with things. Um, but yeah. The thing is, what I'm scared is that I might have to do is this. Even at a low level. At some point, the Climate Change Adaptation Fund is almost always required. 
I'm going to do the university grants, and I'm not going to do an absolute ton. We're going to do, like, well, we could do fee uh, grants for poor students. Though I've talked about this before. Generational wealth gap goes down. I think it's okay. I think we can afford to do this. It's okay. It's not going to be that bad. Education going up is huge, and I need this. So let's go ahead and do it. Anything else? Because we're about to get um, an election. Let's go for the tourism. This increases foreign relations, and also tourism can give you a slight boost to the GDP. So I think that's fine. You're still unhappy, Crystal? I mean, good lord. Like, how much more do you want me to deal with at this point? You're still terrible. I should just fire you at this point. Ugh. The thing is, you're a pretty effective minister now, so I mean, I don't know. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, um, anything else we want to shore up? I mean, fake news is going down a tiny bit. Respiratory disease is going back up. The environment's back up. Good lord. The economy is a thing. That's fine. Uncompetitive economy. Almost got it down. So, a fun thing is, because our unemployment is so low, our productivity has actually gone down. I actually remember emailing the dev of the game, uh, because I found some bugs and I was in a conversation with him already and saying, I think this is wrong, because, you know, the more people are employed, the more national productivity we should have. And it's like, well, not quite how we see it. The way that he's seeing it is that uh, as product, uh, sorry, as unemployment goes down um, and the uh, businesses of our country are desperately trying to fill jobs, that means that people can afford to be a little bit more lax and less productive and people won't fire them, right? So that's kind of where it comes down. He didn't explain it in that way. He just basically said, no, actually, I think it's right. And I was, I was kind of rationalizing it through my head. That's what I've come to the conclusion of what he's trying to argue. Agricultural subsidies. Plant-based diets. Food Standards Agency, if we increase this, people would naturally start working toward that. It would upset farmers, though. I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's not a lot more we can do this turn. I'm just trying to think, like, what would be good? Let's take a look at our expenditure. Our military spending is way too high. So, frankly, is state pensions. I hate the state pension system. Uh, it, both in the game and in real life. I really don't like Social Security. I know why we do it. I know why people want it. However, I think it's a very, very poorly run system. Very poorly run. And it's due to go bankrupt. Well, not bankrupt. Okay, that's actually a mis misconception. I shouldn't spread fake news on this. Um, it's not true that Social Security is going to be going bankrupt. It is going to hit a, a natural built-in uh, reduction in benefits. I think it gets caught, cut down to like 70%. So at some point, the trust fund is going to be running out. It's going to be down on money. And the automatic safeguard measures are going to kick in. And retirees are going to suddenly see they're getting less money from Social Security. Uh, without any intervention from Congress, the way things stand right now. Which, by the way, I think is what Congress is shooting for. Maybe not the Democrats, but at least the Republicans. I think they're shooting for that in the United States because no one has the political will to modify and update and make our state pension system any better than it is right now. It's kind of a third rail in politics. So I think some people are kind of holding out that it's naturally going to fall apart, at least a little bit, and kind of right itself. That's a thing. Um, yeah, we, we would want to get rid of this at some point, or at least reduce it, because it would save me a ton of money. Uh, there's also something we said about reducing our military spending at some point. Oh my god! I guess this kind of makes sense. I mean, the U.S. does spend a lot on its military compared to most countries. Um, well, you know, that's not even entirely true. We don't as much as some countries. Um, as a percentage of GDP, we don't spend as much as some other countries in the world. But compared to, like, just in terms of raw dollar amount, our military spending is massive. It's probably because our GDP is massive. Not to, not to America brag or anything, but you know. Um, yeah, this is the main reason, by the way, we have a good private space industry. We're considered to be very strong. Liberals don't like this. Patriots love it, though. This would be a good way of also saving a chunk of cash. Uh, ceremonial only. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. If we went down to just a very highly trained force, like, we could save a, uh, about 20, 30 billion dollars without enough impact that I think I'd be having any problems. I would be loath to lose the, um private space industry, though. This is kind of going up as is, though, just from improved technology and GDP and other stuff. We could afford to reduce this a little bit, and we wouldn't lose the benefits. I don't know. That may be something we do in the next time. Either way, uh, let's go ahead and move on into the election. I think it is time. We could do a manifesto, but I don't have any more um, political capital. What's human development? Hang on. The average level of human development in your country, this metric has three dimensions. It has to do with health, education, and income. So because we have made health skyrocket, our human development index has improved a lot since I took office. Hello, capitalistic medical solutions. 
I'm telling you guys, maybe we should consider it. Maybe we should consider the whole, um... We should consider the whole, uh, the whole, uh, medical voucher system in the U.S. I don't know. I mean, I feel like it could be set up for a lot of corruption and price capture. But, I mean, it could also be cool. Who knows? I, I don't know. I just like the idea of exchanging ideas when it comes to the healthcare solution, alright? This situation in the U.S. sucks so bad. I know that it sucks so bad. Actually, I have to say, I, I'm not always a fan of a lot of what Donald Trump's administration has done, but he's made a couple of good steps in this. Requiring more transparent pricing when it comes to prescription drugs, as well as importing more prescription drugs, is great. If we can force hospitals to also start sharing uh, transparent pricing information, that's also a good way to do things a little bit. I'm not sure it'll solve the problem. I'm not saying it will. But I think that's at least a step in the right direction. It's just such a corrupt industry right now. Anyway, that's getting a little bit too uh, too far into this, though. So the Futurist Party versus the Absolute Unity Party versus the Movement for True Freedom. And non-voters, of course, because we do have some apathy, but I have fanatical voters. Um, our campaign spent $138 million. We have a 70% boost thanks to a load of activists going out there and spreading the word. Our opponents also spent a pretty good amount of money, but no one's excited about them. So let's start the vote count. Oh, that's looking pretty good. I mean, I... Look, zero, zero votes for our enemies? Hang on, zero? <laughs> no one voted for our opponents! And only 1% of the population... Only 1% of the population was too lazy to get out there and vote! That's it! Oh my god. Alright, I know this is on just normal difficulty, it's only 100% difficulty, but come on guys, I still got it a little bit, right? I still got it a little bit. Let's take a look at that breakdown. Uh, wow, we even got the vote of all the people we hate, or that hate us. I mean, seriously, though. Wow. Changes. Health, that's the big ticket item right there. Health going up by 85% is massive as far as uh, just improving everyone's quality of life and making me win, the, win this uh, election. Lifespan went up. Human Development Index went up. Unemployment dropped. Everyone's becoming vegan. That's fun. Oil price and demand went down, so that's great. Healthcare demand went down because we did a lot of wellness uh, impacts. That's huge. Crime dropped. Immigration went up, partly because our GDP is high. We do need to be wary of this. Too much immigration can be a danger, but we'll see. Air travel is part of the reason our environment is struggling uh, because the GDP rose. Population went up because of the extra lifespan. GDP went up by 27% in the last four years. Poverty dropped. Education went up. All of these are great. Almost all of these are great. Look at this. Legal drug consumption. Wait, do we have legalized cannabis? I think we might, actually. Eh, that's fun. International trade, racial tension even went down. Stability went up. So much good stuff. Working week went down, too. Mainly because um, employers... Oh, say, so this is the thing, right? A lot of people think that you have to have government laws saying we have to move down to a four-day uh, work week and stuff. I'm not necessarily of that opinion. I think if you can make the very good argument that the workforce would benefit from that, eventually corporations will change their ways automatically because if they have more productive workers in four uh, days and it ends up being more profitable than five, uh, which is counterintuitive, I know, but if they can find scientifically that's the case, I think that corporations will naturally make the switch. But on top of that, in this case, because the GDP is rising so much and there's so much demand for more labor and more skills, uh, right now, this is kind of a labor market, just naturally from improving the uh, GDP and the economy as a whole. Uh, laborers can get out there and demand higher prices because there's so much demand. In fact, at some point, I'm kind of concerned it's going to be a problem. I'm kind of concerned that we're going to have too much demand and we're going to have a skill shortage or a worker shortage, in which case immigration would help with that a lot. Private housing went up. Private pensions went uh, up as well. That's going to change once we fish up Social Security. Food price. Generational wealth gap went down. By the way, one of the largest wealth gaps in the world. All right, this right here. I mean, you want to talk about a wage gap? This is it right here. Old versus young, always. Not a problem as far as I'm concerned because young are just starting out. They don't have a lot of experience. They won't command as much uh, income as well as retired. Not only have more, exp uh, more experience, but also they have more accumulated wealth, but still. Car usage went down overall despite the fact that the GDP went up. Technology, corruption, oil supply went up. Charity went up. Business confidence went down, shockingly. I did not expect that. Inflation went up. We got to be careful about that. Yeah. Wow. Lots of great things for our first term as president. And now we can do a post-election reshuffle for free. Really? Okay. I'm getting rid of you. You suck. I hate you. The rest of these guys are kind of okay. I mean, they're not amazing. But they're okay. And I think I can buy their loyalty uh, with just a few more changes to self-employed and capitalists and stuff. As long as we make the environmental happen. She's a potential danger. But we're okay. You, I'm firing you. You suck. We're getting a new one right now. 
Who else can I do for law and order that's more uh, on my side? Surprisingly, the religious are okay. I didn't think they'd be as good as they are, but they're kind of okay. Patriot capitalist. Too bad you don't like the right kind of stuff. Capitalist environmentalist. Could work. I mean, I'm going to be naturally siphoning money toward environmental stuff anyway. Uh, religious capitalist, patriot capitalist uh, over here. That's okay. As long as we don't touch military spending, this is going to be good. State employees, no. Motorists and farmers. You're pretty good, too. Um, it's hard for me not to like some of these. Um, you're better in that you get me some immediate benefits, and these are both groups I still plan on working with. So we're going to do this. All right, we're going to hire you, and now we have more loyal cabinet ministers. Thank God. All right, so we are going to come back to all of this in the next video, but uh, that was an absolute landslide. Um, very soon, the United States is going to turn into a, a one-party state, <laughs> which I find funny. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.